What's up, YouTube? GamerGod85 back again, and yes, once again, we're talking about the Super Nintendo Classic. As you've seen, you've seen my other videos with the unboxing of this great system and how easy it is to mod, to modify it, to add whatever games you want onto it. So, what are we doing here today? We're here to talk about the controllers that come with it. Now, Nintendo's been releasing these consoles again. This is the second one after the NES Classic. To tap into everyone's love of old systems, nostalgia is selling big right now, and Nintendo, of course, wants to get a cut of that. They throw in two legit Super Nintendo controllers, and these are exactly the same controllers you'd probably remember playing as a kid. Including the wire. Now, granted... They do give you more wire this time. With the NES Classic, I believe they only gave you like three feet of cord. This time they give you a full five feet of cord, which is really nice. But, as adults, we've evolved in our gaming. So now our living rooms are no longer where, set up to where we are sitting right up in front of our televisions. Our living rooms are set up to where we have nice wide spaces. And of course, this controller will not reach that space. Now, obviously I could sit on my couch and play on it, but it's not very comfortable when I, and you don't get a full frontal view of the screen, and I want to sit in my nice comfortable armchair and play it that way. Now many companies have made solutions to this uh, with wireless controllers. There's like the Insignia brand, which is Best Buy's official brand. There's... Uh, Retrobit, I believe, makes one. There's tons of them. I just recently purchased two game pads by 8-Bit Doe, which makes really high-quality gaming pads. And these two are specifically designed to, be, to give wireless controllers to the SNES Classic. Here we have the SN30 wireless game pad and the SF30 wireless game pad. Um, these two are basically the same controller. The only major difference is, a, is obviously just by looking at it, the color scheme. Um, obviously, this one is more akin to the Super Nintendo, and this one's more like the Super Famicom with all the nice colorful buttons. Um, they are twenty-five dollars each. They're available on Amazon, and whatever you, whichever style you like, you can go for. But I'm here to give an unboxing and a review of both of these controllers. So let's get ready to do that. Um, while I'm get while we're getting ready to do that, go ahead and hit that like button. Uh, if you like what you see, subscribe, and stay tuned for the whole video because I'm gonna make a special announcement in the middle of this somewhere in this video um, about my next video, which is gonna be really amazing. So, um, and I do have a Patreon now. So if you wanna if you like the channel and you wanna help out and you wanna contribute, links in the description down there. So go ahead and. Uh, Check it out, contribute, and let's get some more. We'll get more videos up. So, we'll start by opening the SN30. Um, check out the box first. So, on that side, you got a picture of it. This tells you what it comes with controller, receiver, cable, manual. Um, again, shows you how it works out. Just another picture of it. So, now we're going to go ahead and open the box. And we're going to take out the controller. It's packed in there really nicely. Very sleek. 8-Bit Doe make, makes really great products. I've seen several of their controllers in action. And they're really great. So here we have the 8-Bit Doe gamepad and the dongle. Um, I'm going to start off by taking out the dongle first. So there's your dongle. Just your standard... Um, standard easy to use dongle. I don't see any uh, like sync button or anything, so I'm assuming it's already synced up. Focus, focus. There we go. 8 bit do. I'm assuming it's already synced up. I don't see a button. I don't see a button anywhere on here to sync this up to the controller. That might be something I'll have to check the instructions on. Yep, just your standard dongle. Very simple. There's our controller. 
pops right out. Whoops, there goes my instructions. Yep, we'll be taking a look at those to make sure that there is no way to sync it up. And your recharger cable. Um, just your standard micro USB, so not, not that new USB-C, it's just your standard micro USB. Probably got, you know, 50 of those. You got probably as much as the as many of those laying around as you do cell phones. So let's take a look at the controller. Um, it's got a piece of plastic over the these buttons here. So let's take that off, okay. And let's take a look. Um, Very sleek looking, feels, well this feels actually very comfortable, very, very much like a Super Nintendo, like the legit Super Nintendo pad. As a matter of fact, I think yeah, I got one right here. Let's uh, do a direct comparison of the two. So, um, yeah, they're about the same size. Um, shape, thickness. Wow, this is really this is really incredible. Um, yeah, there's not really much of a difference between these two. I mean, D pads feel the same. Select and start buttons are straight on this one versus curved on this one, but Yeah, there's ooh These buttons are a little more clicky than these ones seem to be I mean they're these ones are clicky, but they have a little more They're also a little squishy. Ooh, I just pushed a button and it's checking to see what's up. So I Really do like this I like this a lot. It feels, it doesn't feel any heavier, uh, maybe a little heavier, but not, you know, extremely noticeable. So that's pretty good. Um, again, we're going to open this one up. I'm not going to go into quite as much detail about this because it's pretty much exactly the same, just with a, just with the colored uh, A, B, X, Y buttons like you'd find on a Super Famicom, which we didn't get in the U.S. We got the perp the two-tone purples Hang on, let me pop that out of there there we go so we got dongle again same exact thing nothing fancy there i'm going to keep these separate so that they don't get crossed um this controller again has the plastic over it I'm going to take that off there. So there's your, uh, the SF30. Um, feels kind of the same. I mean, these two buttons, obviously, unlike the regular SNES controller and unlike the, um, unlike the other gamepad, the SF30, um, these two buttons, the X and the Y buttons, aren't concave. They are straight out. They're just all the same. Plus, you know, obviously you see a little bit of a different color. Um, again, this is just an aesthetic choice. Um, I'm sure both of these controllers work exactly the same way. It's just mainly what you want to choose to do with it. So now, so now I guess we got to just see how it works out with games. So we're going to pop in a couple of games. I'm going to try a two-player game with, um, with my wife, who's going to help me out with that. And we're going to see... We're going to first do a test with games using the regular standard plugged in game pad. And then we're going to do plugging in these and trying them out. So let's get that all set up. Okay, so we've got the Super Nintendo on and we're using, as you can see, we're using the standard plugged in controller. Um, I'm not going to use any of the downloaded games, any of the modded games. I'm just going to use the standard games. Um, we'll try a good one-player game first. We'll try... Um, we'll give Super Castlevania 4 a shot to see how it works. And then when we do our two-player game, we'll do Super Mario Kart. Because that's a two-player game where you're both doing something at the same time. So if there's going to be any signs of crossing or anything, that'll be where it'll be. Um, I'll also do some Street Fighter 2 to just put in some moves and see what goes on. So yeah, well, that's how we'll test it. Do it. Alright, so now my wife's filming for me so I can have two hands free to try this out for a little bit. 
Okay, so... Don't think Gamer Guy is going to actually fit, so... Alright, so here we got Super Castlevania 4. A really great addition to the SNES Classic. You can do all your cool stuffs there. Um, again, nothing majorly good with the control. Nothing major. Uh, controls just fine, just like a regular game. Um, go into the castle here. Like I say, just controls, controls just fine. Controls just like you're playing this on a real Super Nintendo. Controller feels right. Everything feels good with it. Um, nothing, nothing I can majorly say. I will cheat and use that because I am able to um, reset um, manually because of how I modified the system. Now I'll do some Street Fighter 2. Um, for this one, we're going to go ahead and plug in the second controller, so we have two-player action going on. I'll be doing both on these. Maybe versus battle. Um, we'll, we'll both be Ryu because I know the, I know a couple, he's like the only one I know a couple of the moves for. All right, so uh, so I know how to do the Hadouken. There we go. So you could you could definitely see I was never really one for a uh, street. I was never really good at Street Fighter, but uh, maybe I can learn. Yep, there we go. So Hadouken works. Uh, let's try it with other right other Ryu. So yeah, doing the Hadouken, very easy. Um, you see I can, you know, we can do things. I can do the different, you know, we can press them at the same time. And there's no lag, there's no input errors, nothing like that. So, I mean, you can see that the control, the wired controllers actually work. Um, again, we'll pop on Mario Kart here. And again, I'm going to be doing both of them just because I can't reach my wife with the one controller and she's currently filming this, so I will just do these. Mushroom cup. All right, so we can see um, Luigi's gonna go off on his own a little bit. You really can't do this by yourself, but I mean, there's Mario. They were both they were both going. Luigi, you know, everything works. I mean, it's it's the Super Nintendo Classic. Everyone knows about this. It is, you know, it is what it is. It works. It does it. It does things right. So I mean, you've got everything good. So. Now we're going to plug in the wireless controllers and we're going to give them a try. We're going to put them through the same paces, trying the same games, and we'll see how we like them. So, yeah. Pause it. All right, so I've gone ahead and plugged in the dongles. Um, they both, it's, there is nothing to sync the, this up with. It's just you plug it in, you press start, and it is what it is. Um, one thing I will note, there's no, like, like when you plug in a Super Nintendo, like when you plug in the regular um, controllers that come with it, hang on. When you plug in the regular, you know, Super Nintendo controllers, you get this nice, satisfying sound. I can get it in there one-handed there you get that nice satisfying click and it's not going to go anywhere so you get a nice satisfying click sound when you plug that in versus when you plug in the dongle it just kind of feels like it 
it slips in there. It doesn't actually come out. But syncing it up, really simple. You plug in your dongle. See the light blinking? You press start on the pad you want to use. Light solid on that. On the controller, light solid. Now let's try some games. All right, so we got the controller plugged in. I'm sitting back comfortably in the chair like I showed you. And now we're going to try some Super Castlevania 4. Again, we're going to just play the same games we were doing. Um, I'm not feeling like there's any difference, really. I mean, there is a little bit of an adjustment, I'm not going to lie, about getting used to the start and select buttons. I don't know, I guess that slant really does, you know, have an effect. You know, it's... It's one of those things you won't notice until you um, until you actually play this. But, I mean, it's something it'll easily be used to. You can see I'm not experiencing any, um, any kind of lag or slowdown. You know, the buttons are very responsive. I mean, you can see here... Um, You see right here. Very responsive. No lag on them. No input lag. Um, I'm sitting comfortably playing my game. You know, enjoying it. Uh, I really like the feel of this controller. I mean, I can even do the, you know, flailing thingy that, you know, is one of the cooler features of this game. Um, one thing to note is if you didn't up if you didn't um, include the hack to go back to the menu without having to get up and hit your reset button, the people at Apito include that as part of the as part of the experience. So I mean it's included as part of the programming of the controller. So now we're gonna do a Street Fighter 2, I'm going to throw a couple, we're going to do another, you know, Ryu versus Ryu. Um, while I'm getting ready to do that, I'll make my big announcement. It's, um, next video is going to see us, is going to see me put those dongles inside the system. I'm going to do a hardware mod on the SNES Classic. I really stink at this. I I mean, there we go. I'm throwing a couple Hadoukens. Uh, you know what? It's not it's not anything to do with the controller. It is totally me. But you see, I can kind of get them going. So I mean, it's important for games like Street Fighter that you can do this stuff. Um, just don't ask me to play with any of my friends because I will completely get my butt kicked. Uh, either player can go right back to the menu. So yeah, I'm going to um, do a mod on the Super Nintendo Classic live on YouTube a week from tomorrow at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. So a week from Saturday, that'll be the 23rd, 9 p.m. Eastern Time. I'm going to do a hard mod of the Super Nintendo Classic to make those dongles that are sticking out of the front be on the inside of the system not sticking out of the outside it'll be an interesting video so now the final test um, we're going to do a little mario karting my wife who i like to call my gamer goddess is going to help out so we're going to do um Yep, she's going to pick whoever she wants to be. I've always liked playing as Yoshi, so I'm going to pick Yoshi. And, um, let's go ahead and do just your standard Mario Circuit 1. You see we're both, you know, playing. Um... Our signals aren't getting crossed. It's not like she's not making my character go a direction I don't want to go in, and I'm not making her character go where she doesn't want it to go. I mean, 
the drifting works. So, I mean, yeah, it feels just as comfortable as playing a regular uh, Super Nintendo game. And um, you can see we can both, you can see we're sitting back. We can be comfortable. Uh, we can play it from our from the comfort of our chairs. And we don't have to worry about, we don't have to worry about anything. We don't have to worry about getting back up and, you know, we don't have to worry about getting up to turn off the system or the reset to go back to the menu and anything like that. So, um, I'm going to continue playing. Maybe I'll beat her a little bit and then we'll, I'll be back to give you my final thoughts on the, on the controllers and if I think it's a good buy. So 8 those SN and SF30 wireless controllers, what do I think of them? They're great. I love them. I love that, you know, they give you the, they feel exactly like you're playing with a Super Nintendo controller. Um, it doesn't feel any heavier. Like I said, the only thing that's going to take a little getting used to is the fact that the start and select buttons are straight and not slanted. Um, but again, that's just one of those things. It's hard to describe it until you actually get to try it and you'll notice it. But it's not a deal breaker. It's not something that's hard to get used to. Um, for 25 bucks, I mean, you really can't go wrong with this controller. It it feels legit. I mean, it legit feels like it's a controller made by Nintendo for the Super Nintendo Classic. Um, I'm probably never going to use the regular Super Nintendo Classic controllers again. I'm probably just going to put them off to the side and um, and never really, never really go for them again because... Why should I? They're, these ones are all nice. Um, let's see what. Let me check what the instructions have to say. Um, instructions claim to give you uh, 25 hours of playtime on a full charge, and it'll recharge with 60 minutes. Um, within 60 minutes, uh, it goes to sleep if you don't use it within 15 minutes. So obviously, it's not going to. Um, it's not going to waste your battery. I like the fact that there's no sync button or anything. It just, you press start on the controller you want to use. Um, because, as I said, I'm going to hard mod this thing live next week. And one of the things I've heard is you have to be careful because once, if you have a controller, like some 8-bit con Do controllers have a sync button on the dongle, and if you have to, if you use one of those, you're going to wind, you're not going to be able to resync it once you close up the Super Nintendo without reopening it. So it is a big deal to, to think about if you're using a controller like that. But luckily, these controllers, uh, the only, the only syncing action you do is you press start and it'll sync it up to, uh, to the dongle. So it's no, there's no difference whatsoever. Um, again, at 25 bucks, it is totally worth it. I recommend getting two of them. You won't regret it. Um, you could be like me. Again, you could get one of each. Um, if you want to go, you know, regular Super Nintendo, keep the aesthetic as, you know, for the U.S. market. You want the SN30. Um, if you want to add, spice it up a little bit, you'd want the SF30 with the nice colorful... A, B, X, Y buttons. Uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Again, if you like what you see, give me a like. Subscribe down below so you're always in the know. Tune into my channel next Saturday, 9 p.m. We'll do the hard mod of the Super Nintendo Classic. We'll add those dongles inside. And it'll be it'll be a really great show. So don't miss it. Remember, subscribe if you if you aren't subscribed already, so you'll be so you'll know when I'm going live. And thanks for watching. Catch you next week.